Hello, this video is to help you with Circuit Chapter 12. The data for this video that they use to calculate Yates' correction for continuity, which is also the chi-squared corrected, the data they're using for the observed frequencies is found on table 12.1, page 399 of your textbook. And the data they're using for the expected frequencies is from table 12.2, page 400 of your circuit textbook. The primary page we're going to be using starting at is page 416. So turn to page 416 of your circuit textbook, and we'll talk our way through this. When I work these, I work on the columns. I work for, from top to bottom on the columns, and I work across the rows. So let's work through this. The A, notice I labeled my tables A, B, C, D, and A, B, C, D. The reason for that is for the A for the observed frequency is calculating the attitude on intervention 4. Your 4 in the attitude on death penalty, you support it where it's the same for the expected frequency. The A column is attitude on intervention, your 4, and attitude on death, death penalty, they support it. Okay, so they have to correlate that way. So for the observed frequencies, the A is 15, working down, the B is 5, the C is 5, and the D is 15. Now we go over to the expected frequencies, which is our next column over to the right, which the A is 10. Don't get tripped up, all the numbers are the same, that's why I'm going to talk you through it. The B is 10, the C is 10, and the D is 10. Now, the next column you're doing is the observed frequencies minus the expected frequencies. So, look across on the row. The observed frequency is 15 minus the expected frequency was 10, so that equals 5. And for the next one down, the observed frequency is 5 minus 10. The expected frequency is negative 5. Working down again, the observed frequency is 5 minus 10. The expected frequency is 5. Working down to the very last one, the observed frequency is 15 and the expected frequency is 10. That equals 5. Now, for the next column, it's the absolute value of the previous one we just did, which is the observed frequency minus expected frequency. Remember the um, absolute value when you're looking at a number line. Zero is there, and let's say this is 5, and that is negative 5. They're both 5 pretend it's even. They're both five places from the zero. That's what it is, what's the amount of distance. So let's work our way down. For the first one, five, the absolute value is five. So the absolute value of negative five is five. The absolute value of negative five is five. And the absolute value of five is five. Now to go to the next column. The next column is observed frequency minus expected frequency, what the absolute value was minus 0 0.5. So don't get tripped up, these are all 5's, but I'm going to talk through, because they won't, they're usually not the same number like this. So the observed frequency, the absolute value of the observed frequency minus the expected frequency is what we just did in this column. So it's 5 minus 0 0.5 equals 4.5, and working down, it's 5 minus 0 0.5 equals 4.5, and again, 5 from the previous on the same row, 5 minus 0 0.5 equals 4.5. And looking across the, the previous row for this column, 5 minus 0 0.5 equals 4.5. Now the next column is the absolute value of observed frequency minus the expected frequency minus 0 0.5, which, as you know, that was the answer for previous column. All you're doing is squaring it. That number times itself. So 4.4 times 4.4 equals 20.25. And again, 4.4 times 4.4 equals 20.25. 4.4 times, I mean, 4.5 times 4.5 equals 20.25. And again, it's the same number. 4.5 squared equals 20.25. Now the last column is... Notice on the top, it's the answer to what we just did. That goes on the numerator at the top. So it's the absolute value of observed frequency minus expected frequency minus 0 0.5 squared, 
over the expected frequency. And that's the expected frequency per the row. Now notice all the rows, the expected frequency is 10. So if the number is different, which usually it is, it will be a different number than on the bottom for possibly each one. So this one, the top number, comes across from the previous column. Notice it's the same. 20.25 divided by the expected frequency for that row, which is 10, equals 2.025. And for the next one down, what's on the top is really the answer for the previous column because it's the absolute value of ZERB frequency minus frequency, the expected frequency minus 0 0.5 squared, so that's what we just calculated. So it's 20.25 divided by the row's expected frequency, which is 10, equals 20.25 divided by 10 is 2.025. And again, the numerator number comes across 20.25 divided by the row's expected frequency, frequency, which is 10, equals 2.025, and the last one, again, that's the top, the number in the numerators, what we calculated before, 20.25 from the previous column, divided by the expected frequency for this row, which is 10, equals 2.025. Now, you want to add this whole column together, all the answers, because that's our sigma or summation of our absolute value of observed frequency minus expected frequency minus 0 0.5 squared over expected frequency. When you add all these together, the 2.025 plus 2.025 plus 2.025 plus 2.025 equals 8.100. Hey, that's the same formula as what we have for the chi-squared corrected. Yes! So that's our chi-squared corrected. The adding of that column, which is 8.100, and remember degrees of freedom before. Degrees of freedom for chi-squared is the number of rows, which is 2. The rows, for example, supports and opposes. That's one running west to east, so it's 2 minus 1 times, oop, I want that a little darker for you, 2 minus 1 times the number of columns, which is for and against, remember like columns like a building, north to south, that's a column, 2 minus 1, so that's 2 minus 1 is 1, times 2 minus 1, which is 1, so 1 times 1 equals 1, remember that's how we cal calculated degrees of freedom for our chi-squared. So next we're going to do that we have the um, chi-squared corrected, 8.100, so we're going to look at our table and find out the chi-squared critical values at 0 0.05 with the degrees of freedom of 1, which our chi-squared critical for that is 3.84, which, oh, our number is bigger. Our level of significance is larger than the 0 0.05 level. So that's the level in behavioral health and in counseling that we reject the null hypothesis. So, yes, we can reject the null hypothesis, but at what's the highest level that we can do that of significance? So let's look at the next one. The, the chi-squared critical value of 0 0.01 for degrees of freedom of 1 is 6.64. Okay, that's smaller than our 8.100, which our level of significance is greater than what they have. So it at least has to be 6.64 or greater or bigger, so ours is. So it is significant at the 0 0.01 level. Let's try up one more and see what it looks like. The chi-squared, the critical for 0 0.0 or 0 0.001 equals 10.83. Oop, that number is bigger than ours. It's a higher level of significance. So our 8.100 is smaller. So our highest level of significance is here at the 0 0.01. So the way we write that is reject the null hypothesis, reject H subscript 0, because our P is less than 0 0.01. And this is your chi-squared corrected, or is your homework assignment will be asking you, I believe, for is the Yates correction for continuity. That's how you do the formula.